Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. As we saw in the last lesson of this chapter, when you draw a shape, the shape should appear as already being selected. However, if it is not selected, then you need to click it to select it prior to formatting it. Once the shape has been selected, you will see the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab appear in the ribbon. This tab provides you with several formatting options for the selected object. At the left end of the Format tab in the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon is the Insert Shapes button group. The large scroll box in this group contains quick access to shapes that you can insert and functions in the exact same way that the Shapes button drop-down menu does. To the right of that, there are two additional buttons, the Edit Shape button and the Text Box button. For some types of shapes that are drawn by hand, such as the Scribble or the Freeform shapes, you can click the Edit Shape button and then select the Edit Points command after you have finished drawing the shape to display the drawing points of the object. You can then click and drag the points to change the shape of the object. You can also click this button and select the Convert to Freeform. This will convert any selected shape into a freeform shape so you may edit its points. You can also click the Edit Shape button and then roll over the Change Shape command to replace the selected shape with another shape by choosing the replacement shape from the listing shown. Clicking the text box button allows you to insert a text box into your slide. In the Shape Styles section, you can make stylistic changes to your shape that affect the appearance of the fill and line of the shape. You can scroll through the choices shown in the large scroll box of preset shape appearances and click the one that you would like to apply to your shape. You can also use the buttons available to the right of the scroll box to completely customize the appearance of your shape. You can use the Shape Fill drop-down to fill the inside of your shape with one of the many available colors, pictures, gradients, or textures available. Note that this button is unavailable for shapes that do not contain any fillable area, such as lines and arrows. If you wish to select a fill color, then you can click one of the color choices shown in the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu. If the colors shown aren't quite what you need, notice that you can select the More Fill Colors to open the Colors dialog box. In the Colors dialog box, you can create almost any color you desire. You can either click the Standard tab and then select one of the colors shown in the Honeycomb of Color Choices, or you can click the Custom tab and then select the color that you want. Note that at the bottom of both tabs you can use the transparency slider to set the level of transparency you want to apply. If you open the color dialog box, click the OK button once you have made a choice to apply the selected color. Note that if you did apply a fill effect to a shape and then wish to remove it, you can select the No Fill command in the Shape Fills button drop-down to remove any fill effect. You can also insert a picture into your shape as a fill effect. To do this, you would choose the Picture command from the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu of choices to open the Insert Picture dialog box. Here you can navigate to and then select the picture that you want to use as the fill effect for the selected shape. You can also select a gradient to apply to the selected shape by rolling your mouse pointer over the gradient command in the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu and then clicking on a preset gradient that you want to apply. If you want to add a texture to this shape, then choose the Texture command from the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu and then click the texture that you want to apply from the choices shown in the side menu. Back in the Shape Styles button group on the Format tab, you will find the Shape Outline button drop-down menu. 
The choices that you make here affect the appearance of the lines in the shape. This is also the button that you can use to alter the appearance of the shapes that are nothing more than lines, such as the line shape or the arrow shape. Once you click the Shape Outline button, you will see that you can easily select a color shown in the color palette of choices to change the line color of your selected shape. If you want to remove the line color, you can select the No Outline choice from the Shape Outline button's drop-down menu. If you want to change the width of the shape's outline, then make a selection from the side menu of choices that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the Weight command. Likewise, you can choose a different dash style for the outline from the choices available in the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the Dashes command. If you're formatting a line shape or an arrow shape, then you can change the endpoints on the line or arrow by making a choice from the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the arrows command. You can click the Shape Effects button in the Shape Styles button group to apply various styles or preset effects to your selected shape. To do this, click the Shape Effects drop-down button and then choose the desired category of effect styles to apply from the choices shown in the menu. You can then select the desired style to apply from the side menu of choices that appears for the selected effect category. If your selected shape contains text, then you can select a word art style to apply from the listing of styles shown in the word art styles button group. You can use the Text Fill button to apply a custom color, picture, gradient, or texture just as you would using the Shape Fill button. You can also set the appearance of the outline using the Text Outline drop-down button, much as you would the Shape Outline button. You can also apply a style using the Text Effects drop-down. This works the exact same way that the Shape Effects button does in that you select a category and then you can select which style to use for your text just as you would if you were formatting a shape. The buttons shown in the Arrange button group display the same options that you had when you learned to format pictures and clip art. In the Arrange button group you will find buttons that allow you to change the placement of the selected shape. If you have overlapping shapes in your slide you can click either the Bring to Front or send to back drop-down buttons to change the order in which the shapes overlap each other in the stack. If you have multiple shapes selected, then you can click the Align button to choose from one of the available alignment options. The Group button is also used if you have multiple shapes selected in your presentation. In this case, you can click the Group button to group the individual shapes together as a single unit. Note that you can also take a shape that has been grouped together and click the Group drop-down button and then click the Ungroup. You can click the Rotate button to select a rotation option for the selected shape in your slide. Also, like images, you can use the Size section to resize the shape if desired. You can use the spinner arrows at the right end of either the height or the width text boxes to increase or decrease the height or width of the selected shape. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.